Okay, um, we'll talk today about the burdens of life. And uh, our highlight verse is, Cast your burden on the Lord and He shall sustain you. إِلْقِ عَلَى رَبِّ هَمَّكْ وَهُوَ يَعُولُكَ So we'll talk about different kinds of burdens. And what are they? And what are... What is it that we walk around in life carrying on our shoulders? And then we'll take a couple of examples of people that had burdens and how they loaded them. And um, we'll also talk about how do we unload the burdens as the Lord um, suggested to us. So types of burdens. We have all kinds of burdens and life is not uh, short of putting burdens on ourselves. Some of them are external burdens come from outside. Some are from within, self-inflicted. Some are apparent to others, and some are hidden inside our hearts, and we carry them for all our lives. But the types of burdens as classification is either spiritual burdens, emotional burdens, physical burdens, social and family-related burdens, and materialistic burdens. So nobody is um, immune from having burdens. Everybody on this earth, as long as they are in the flesh, they carry burdens on their shoulders. Even saints carry burdens on their shoulders. The difference when a saint, when we see saints, hermits, and abat suwah, so lightly burdened, or appear to us so lightly burdened, that they can actually hover on the clouds. The difference is that they figured out how to cast their burdens on the Lord, and so they become so light that they can actually be above earth. They don't have any burdens. Actually, it's not like they don't have any burdens. They have burdens, but they learned how to quickly and in timely fashion unload these burdens off their shoulder, and that's why they appear to be light. But the fact is, as long as we are on earth, as long as we are humans, which we are, and as long as we are still in the flesh, we will always have burdens. But the trick is to cast the burdens on the Lord, and He shall sustain us. So let's talk about spiritual burdens. What are spiritual burdens? And why are they burdensome? Spiritual burdens are sin is the biggest spiritual burden. We walk in this life with sin. It's a heavy load on our shoulders. Guilt, spiritual warfare, devil's warfare, inadequacies that we feel in, short, in our shortcomings in serving the Lord as servants. Spiritual burdens or the feel of guilt from sin is a double-edged sword. Even the feel of inadequacies in, the, in serving God is a double-edged sword. What does that mean? It means it's something that is good and not good. Well, guilt that is resulting from sin is a good thing. Why? It's the single motivation for feeling remorse and having the desire to repent. If I don't feel I'm guilty of anything, I would not have any desire to repent. That's why the devil is so tricky in this world that we live in. The devil tries to normalize the sin. It's not a big deal. Everybody does that. Everybody, it, it's, it, it, he tries to make us feel that the sin is normalized. It's normal. Why? Because once we feel normalized, we have no desire for repentance. But that guilt is a burden. And we're not supposed to live with the guilt of sin for a long time. Because if we do, it's very easy for the devil. See, the devil comes, gets you coming and going. If you, if you fall in sin, he's going to try to make you um, not feel guilty because he doesn't want you to repent. And if you feel guilty, he's going to try to take that to his advantage, which is, oh, you're bad. You fall in despair. And then all of a sudden, you have no hope to repent. So it's not good that we walk around in life with the burden of sin and the guilt of sin for a long time. It's good as a motivation for repentance, 
but if it lingers too long and if we linger f uh, on that state for too long, it's b it becomes very, very tricky for us or it becomes uh, risky that we may, we may fall in despair and not want to repent because it, be it becomes like a mountain. So that's why it's a double-edged sword. Feeling inadequacies of, uh, of serving God is also a double-edged sword because if I don't feel uh, that I have shortcomings, if I don't feel my inadequacies, I, I don't need to improve. I don't need to be a better servant. I'm good. I'm doing my job. I'm serving God, and I'm trying to do my best, and that's it. But if I feel inadequate, and if I feel that I'm lacking, that's a motivation for me to improve. But if I keep thinking that I'm an inadequate, the devil can sway that to his side and say, look at you. You're not a good servant. You might as well not just serve. You not, might as well not, not do what you're doing because, because you're not doing a good job. So spiritual burdens are something that are heavy on our shoulders, whether it's sin, inadequacies, feel of guilt, uh, warfare from the devil in a particular sin that we're fighting for a long time and we don't see victory. That's a, that's a burden. That's a burden that God does not want us to carry on our shoulder because it's, it, it hurts and it's troublesome. So to that, what do we do? We cast our burden on the Lord and he shall sustain us. And we will learn how we do that after we, we go through the different types of burdens. A second type of burdens is the emotional burden. Emotional burden is not related to sin and it's not related to guilt, but it's a burden of suffering. Suffering, sorrow, sadness, feel of loss, disappointment in life and in people, anger and bitterness, these are all emotional uh, burdens. And by, by no means I cover all the, the examples of burdens. I'm just taking some common examples that we go through so we can understand what is it that is burdensome. I was talking to someone and I was saying that the problem with burdens is sometimes people walk in life not even knowing that they're burdened. They're carrying a heavy load and they don't even realize that they're carrying a heavy load until they come down crashing because they're not realizing that. So it's a good way to understand what is it that we're facing in life and what is it that we're carrying in our shoulders and how do we unload that. Burden of suffering is when you're suffering any emotional trauma. I'm sure that Maggie can uh, talk a lot about emotional trauma. She probably sees it every day being a psychologist. Uh, feeling of sorrow and feeling of loss. You ever had a loved one in your family, a parent or a, or a sibling that you lost? And how much sorrow is that? That hurts. That's a burden. That's a heavy load on your shoulder when you, or in your heart when you, when you lose someone or when you no longer have someone um, that was in your life. That's an emotional burden. Disappointment and anger not only can be a burden, but it's something that chips away in your, in your spirit and chips away in your heart. Uh, not only that it's a heavy load, but it can consume human being, especially anger and bitterness. How many people live in this life angry and bitter? Bitter and angry at other people? Bitter and angry at life? Sometimes even bitter and angry Towards, love, towards God. Why? Because they have a problem. They're carrying a load and it's, and it's hurting them and it's heavy on their shoulder. Well, God doesn't want us to have that. He doesn't want us to have all that heavy burden on our shoulder. And, and anger and bitterness, not only, like I said, not only a burden, but they can also chip away. They consume us like fire. That's anger and bitterness. Consumes men like fire. And to that, we also cast our burden on the Lord. Physical burdens. Physical burdens are disease, infirmities, physical illness that we or someone in our families might be suffering from. And that's a heavy load. That's also a burden. And that's something that God also wants us to unload on Him. Social and family burdens. Burdens of a troubled marriage. You might have a troubled marriage and you might be quiet about it. You might have a husband that is troublesome. You might have a wife that's not a good wife. 
I hope you don't, but you might. That's a burden. You might have a, a child that's a problem child. A child that you toiled and labored in raising, but he didn't turn out to be a good child. Turned out not to be obedient or turned out not to be, not to be godly and ungrateful to what you did. What is that? That's a burden. Especially when you didn't do anything wrong. Especially when, you, when you're a father or a mother, a good parent that did everything possible, raised them in the eyes of the Lord, and the kid turned out a bad apple. What is that? That's a burden. It's a burden you carry and you can't do anything about it other than praying to God. Is that a trial from God? Could be. Or you might have a difficult parent. Turn the table around. You might be a, a young man and a young woman that you have a parent that is not doing their job as a parent. That they're not good parents. Do we have parents that are not good in our society? No? The app says no. All parents are good. All parents are supposed to be good. <laughs> but all our parents good? I have shortcomings as a parent and I hope I can overcome them before the kids are grown up and, and I have to be, to be blamed. All of, all of us have uh, shortcomings. But there are parents that are just not good. They don't know what parenthood is and they're not doing a good job. And they don't want to do a good job. Would that be a burden on you as a young man or a young woman? Yes, that would be a burden. These are social and family burdens. And the last but not least of the types of burdens is materialistic burdens. These are the burdens of life uh, as we have to live through it. Burdens of pressure and responsibility, worry and anxiety, career, education, academic achievements, financial burdens. You might be you might be financially burdened because you're the only breadwinner in the family and you might be supporting not just your family, you might be supporting two families. Some people have that burden. Is that heavy? Yes. Especially when, you, when you're struggling in this life, it's not easy. God himself told, us, told Adam that you, with, with your sweat you'll, you'll, you'll earn your bread and, uh, and that's a burden. And some of us have a light burden in that department and some of us have heavy burden in that department. Some of us are blessed and it comes easy and some of us have to hard labor and toil to earn their income. The burden of pressure at work, and that's huge. You get stress at work? Anybody gets stress at work? Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Or just me? <laughs> I see a lot of people smiling. Yeah, there's nothing can be more stressful than stress at work. And some of us have it, some of us don't have it. But many of us know what stress at work is. You might be burdened by, by an overbearing boss at work. Someone that is breathing down your neck, very demanding, want you to do more and more and more. That's a burden. That's a big burden. Pressure in performing at work and pressure in performing in your career and pressure that in your education. Some of you are in college or going through graduate school and you have pressure. You have pressure to perform better and, and be successful and compete in your class and get a better grade. These are all burdens. And these are all things that weigh us down and, and are heavy load on our shoulders. And these are the things that Jesus said, I came so your life can be better. I don't want you to have these burdens. Not that I want you to not have them. I want you to have them, and I want you to carry them, and I want you to feel how heavy they are. But as soon as you know how heavy they are, and you cannot carry them anymore, just dump them on me. That's what he wants us to do. Jesus himself carried burdens. Really? The Lord himself? The Almighty? Yes. Let's look at Mark 14. And those were very profound words. He told, uh, he told his disciples, sit here while I pray. And then he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he went a little further, and, um, 
And he was, the, the Bible says that, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. The Lord himself that performed so many miracles and commanded the wind to stop and the sea to calm and all these things, he was deeply distressed and troubled. What is that? That's a burden. It's a different kind of burden though from what we carry. It's the burden of the whole world, of humanity from beginning to end, everyone. It's the burden of sin of the world, the burden of salvation. And then he, he verbalized it. He, he, he didn't just take it inside. He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That's a heavy burden on him. And uh, what did Jesus do with that burden? Immediately in that passage, it says that he went further and then he went down on his knees and he said, Father. He lift up his eyes to heavens and he said, everything is possible for you. That's the first thing that got to come to our minds when the burdens are so heavy and they are so burdensome and we cannot carry them on our shoulders. Is that everything, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, if you will. In some other translations or in some other books, um, it says, if you will, take this cup from me. Why? It's a burden. He's feeling that heavy burden. And he said, if it's your will, please take this cup away from me. Yet, it is not my will, but it's your will. So it is not that I want to get rid of the, of the burden. I want you, God, to tell me whether you want me at this point in life to, to not have that or should I continue carrying it for a little bit more. It's your will, O oh Lord. Because when I carry that burden, I know that you want me to carry that burden and you have a purpose for me to carry that burden. But if it's your will, take it away from me. That's exactly how Jesus dealt with the burden and how he modeled for us how to deal with heavy burdens. We will see a little bit uh, how David dealt with burdens. So burdens are abundant and the Bible says many are the afflictions. Those are are, are burdens. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them, deliver him out of them all. God will always deliver us from these burdens and afflictions. And we'll see how. And he will never let us be defeated. And the words of St. Paul can never be, can, we can never find better words to describe that. And let's see what St. Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians. He said, we are hard pressed on every side. These are the pressures and the anxieties of the world. Anxiety, pressure, stress, all the things that are pressing us, we are pressed from every side. Just the walls are coming close on us and the world becomes a small, small bubble and dark and, 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 and not good. Yet, not crushed. We are not crushed. So we are stressed, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, confused. Have a lot of thoughts in our heads, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. This is God's promise. Is that when things feel and seem to be overwhelming, and, and so stressful, and anxiety is pumping in our hearts, and life is becoming very difficult, remember these words. We're perplexed, but not in despair, pressured, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Because God will not allow us to be destroyed. He will not allow us to be destruct, the, uh, crushed. He's not going to allow us to be forsaken. He will never forsake us. So how do we cast our burdens on the Lord? Well, let's see what Jesus said or what Jesus did in Gethsemane. He did what? He went down on his knees, lift up his eyes, and he said, Father, I know you can do it. I know everything is possible in your hand. Very two simple um, verses. That's the beauty of, uh, of spiritual things in the Bible, that they're very simple and straightforward. You want to cast your burden on the Lord? Come to me. That's exactly what Jesus did. 
When he was overwhelmed with a burden, he went down in his knees and he modeled for us how to lift up our eyes and how to pray to God and tell him, please take this cup away from me. Come to me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Call upon me in the day of your tribulation or the day of your trouble, and I will deliver you. Just call upon me. So what is it really that we need to do to cast our burden on the Lord? Very simple. You go down on your knees in your room and you let your tears come out. Don't think you're too manly for tears if you're a man. Women have less problem with tears. They can shed their tears and, and they do a better job in letting that come out. And I give that to them because it gives comfort. Tears give comfort. Tears of remorse, tears of repentance, or tears of just, I am defeated. I can't do anything. You know, the problem we, especially for men more than women, is that we like to be men. I you know, can't let the tears come down. I can fight this. You know, take it like man. And it's good. Do that. But just remember that there are certain things that God is going to put in our lives to bring us down to, to our knees. Why? Because He wants us that way. He wants us humble. He wants us, I don't want to say He wants us broken spirit, but He wants us to come down to the low point because we're stubborn. We, we think that we can live this life. I can fix it. I can do better. I have a problem at work. I can fix it. Just put some more hours and put some more resources and solve the problem. I have a problem at home. I'll address it and I'll fix it. I'll read about it and I'll take care of it. We have a solution to everything and it's not our fault. God created us out that way. He created us creative, resourceful, and want to do things. But what happens when we keep doing that? God disappears from our lives. So he says, well, if I love you, I'm gonna bring you down on your knees. And when that happens, you should, you should be happy because once you go down on your knees, you let your tears out and then all these burdens come off your shoulder. All of it. I don't know why tears do that, but, but that's a good thing. And tears don't necessarily happen to, don't, don't necessarily have to be tears. They could be just emotions and feelings. I mean, some of us may not have good glands for tears and they don't have <laughs> tears, but, but it's the feelings. It's the feeling of, God, I am at my low point in life. I have taken that much load on my shoulder and I can't take it anymore, but I am dumping it all on you. And, and just put it out and lead, let it out of your heart, whether physically tears come out of your, of your eyes or not, doesn't matter, but you take your load out in prayer in your room. And he will give you rest. And he will deliver you, according to these two verses. Let's see another example. David. Uh, surprisingly, and I have to admit, it was my first time to read that part. It's in um, chapter 55 or uh, Psalm 55. The same Psalm that he said later down at the end of the Psalm, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. This was actually the conclusion. Before that conclusion, and I, I actually never read that deeply until I read that Psalm a couple of days ago when I was preparing. And I was like, huh, this is the, the predecessor of that of that verse. This is the background of that verse. What's that background? Well, we all know that David was chaste and he had a lot of burdens, more than anybody probably. Uh, let's read what he, um, what he was saying. Uh, give ear, this is actually verse 1 or verse 3. Uh, give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my, supp my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. Okay, David, what do you want me to hear you? What do you want to say? He says, I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily because of the voice of my enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. David was chaste, and he was not having anxiety of loss of work, or he was afraid that he would lose his job, or he was afraid to lose his his, uh, his kingship or his authority. The man was on a much basic level, more than us even. He was, he was afraid to lose his life. 
He, be, he was being not only hated, but he was being sought after for his life. The man was hiding, waking up every day, sleeping, up, sleeping down every night, knowing that somebody's coming in and wants to kill him. And what makes matters worse is that the person that wanted to kill him was supposed to be his friend. That, that must be very troublesome to anybody. Imagine if Ehab is my friend or if, uh, if Ifad is my friend and all of a sudden they're chasing me and they want to kill me. Well, that would be, must be hurtful, right? M much more hurf hurtful than any other enemy. And a man is fearing for his own life. Anxiety, fear of, of death, and fear for his own life, no safety, must be very difficult. And he even said that my heart is severe, severely pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me, overwhelmed me. The same overwhelming feelings that Jesus had in Gethsemane. Probably in a different way, but, but someone is, is fearing for his own life and being chased, too much anxiety. So what did he do? The first inclination that came to David, which we will learn that he corrected himself. The first inclination, he said, Oh Lord, I wish I had wings. This is someone that just had it so much and he couldn't deal with it anymore. He couldn't deal with being chased and he said, I wish I had wings like a dove so I can fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander off and remain in the wilderness. I just want to go in the forest and hide in the trees or get wings and fly out and fly away and just go live in my own cocoon and live on my own and, and stay away from this trouble. His first inclination was run away from the trouble. In fact, it's the same chapter, the same psalm that at the end he said, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. David realized that he doesn't need wings. He doesn't need wings to fly away and fly away and, 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 and run away from the problem. David realized that he, need, he needs feet, strong feet to stand on so he can face the problem. And so he can, rather than run away from the fear and run away from the burden, rather he should carry it and then cast it on the Lord. It's not the solution to the problem is, to run, is not to run away from the problem. The solution of the problem is not to make it go away or God miraculously make it go away. The solution to the problem, according to this, is to take it, carry it, but not, don't let it crush you. Dump it on the Lord and cast it on the Lord. And that's exactly what David realized. He realized that he needs to carry his load, but then he needs to cast it on the Lord. So in summary, you cast your burden on the Lord by two things. Come to me and call upon me. I saw a nice picture, I didn't have time to put it in, a, in the slides, where there's a picture of the cross, and then a guy comes in with a load on his shoulder, kind of like this stick figure, and then, and then he dumps it on the cross, under the feet of the cross, and then he's walking away free from any load, and he's doing this. I'm happy. I dumped my load and I dumped my burden on the Lord. And how do you dump your load and how do you cast your burden on the Lord? At the feet of the cross. And what's the feet of the cross? What's the concept of the feet of the cross? It's pouring one's soul in the time of prayer. Pouring one's soul at the feet of the cross, at the feet of forgiveness. When you, when you bring everything inside that is tightening your chest and weighing down your heart and you put it at the feet of Christ and you tell him, here, take it. You came and got crucified for my sake. You came to be crucified so you can make my life better and take my burden away and give me salvation. I have, a, I have burden and I want you to carry it as you promised me. And glory to, be to God forever. Any questions or comments? We actually have a couple of minutes if you want. Or do we? Yeah, it's okay. Eddie. Just the reference of that first verse. Uh, 55, uh, Psalm 55, 
I think I had it here somewhere on the first slide. Uh, 5522, I believe. Yeah, 55-22. And the story of, uh, of him wanting to have wings and fly away and uh, verbalizing his, uh, his uh, emotions was in 55, verse 3 to 6 or 3 to 9. Ron? Um, what, so what if, you, what if you go to him and you call to him and he's still silent? Ah, I got, a, I got a verse for that. Wait on the Lord. <laughs> Wait on the Lord, yes. Um, that's a good point. What, what if you go to him and, and the burden keeps coming back um, a matter of time? You be patient. And I think sometimes God waits on us because, it, it, put it this way, if you have a burden and you cast it on the Lord and you don't have any burden, you may not be brought down to your knees. Sometimes, it depends from one person to another. Some people, doesn't take much to get down on their knees and, and be humbled. And some people, it takes a little bit more. Why? Maybe because they're stubborn. Maybe because they have a little bit of arrogance or, or, or pride. Uh, and it takes a little bit more work from God. Um, and it, it depends on the person. Some people find that comfort and find that rest very quickly, and some people take them a long time. It depends. There is a point about, about burdens, and, and you know, many times we pray that for God to remove the burden or the, the trouble. You know, there's probably no better person at praying than St. Paul, I mean, one of the best. And he prayed for the thorn of his flesh to be, to be taken away, and it was never taken away. No. I mean, I think we need, uh, you know, it changes your thought about the kind of prayer to your point. that. You know, sometimes God wants us, he wants us to grow closer to him through the struggle of that burden that he puts on us. So in some cases, we ask for God's will. In some cases, God's will is that that burden is removed, and I learn from that. And sometimes God's will is that that burden is not removed, like St. Paul's case where it was never removed. But God gave him rest and comfort. Yes, he did. And he was able to cope with it. having comment about uh, waiting for God on the parable uh, of the persistent widow at the end of it Jesus comment on it he, he, he told the story and then he, he has given a comment saying uh, hear what the unjust judge said and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. You can see the conflict between speedily and bears long. It's by our measure, it's too long. But his measure, he, he came right away. He came at the right time. So it's, it's a matter of different standards. Many times when we say, wait on the Lord, maybe sometimes God is waiting for us to be ready for the healing. Yeah. <laughs> There is a very well-known question. <laughs> there is a very well-known question, which is, uh, prayer is changing God's will. If, if we pray for something, His will will be changed. And actually, the, the answer is, prayer is changing our will to match, or to to be the same as God's God's will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Megid, for this uh, rich spiritual talk. Okay, let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. We thank you, our God, because you didn't keep away from our burdens. And even you didn't just say good words for to us, but you came to take our burdens on you. 
you have taken all our burdens. You have been crucified for us. While you are the holiest, you accepted to be a sinner, to take the burden of sin. You came and you accepted bitterness from the people who you loved and you came for. You accepted all kinds of burdens for our sake. Teach us how to ask the comfort from no one and from nothing other than you. Because actually no one and nothing can take our burdens. Teach us how to be lowly, how to be broken hearted, how to be how to kneel down and ask for the true comfort that no one can give us other than you. We believe in your promises that if we cast our burdens on you, you will sustain us. Give us this experience, not just to be our words heard or read or stories told, but an experience, a personal experience. Teach us how to pray and to ask for your support, your help, to take our burdens. Bless everybody. Bless Maggot who spoke to us. Bless all servants and all services on that church and on every church and every place on the whole world. We ask your blessings for the whole world through the intercession of our mother, St. Mary, and St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who pleased you since the beginning. Make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil one. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine the kingdom of the power, the glory for our life. The love of God the Father and the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship, gift, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace and peace of the Lord be with you.